go to the next level. Thanks for watching. My name is Syed and I'll see you in the next video. Welcome everybody. Welcome to Claydesk. My name is Syed and today I'm going to talk about very, very important career path topics, tell you all about DevOps, right? And of course, DevOps engineer. So as a DevOps professional, sometimes, you know, if you were like thinking about from a beginner's perspective, how to get into DevOps, I'm going to create this video outlining steps you know, step by step from zero to DevOps engineer and the knowledge that you have now, what would be the most efficient path to get there? So basically, what are the steps to become a DevOps engineer and what you need to learn in which order? Now, I've made several videos. You can go check those out, of course, explaining the career path and which platform to choose and whatnot. But here, I'm going to approach it from a different perspective and show how you can become a DevOps engineer if you were starting from scratch, right? And I wanted to make it more individual uh, with the most uh, background, let's say, transitioning into DevOps and based on your experience, for example. And I have several students or individuals requesting me, sending me messages on LinkedIn or right here in the comments. So I've decided to you know, create this latest video on how you can become a DevOps professional, whether an engineer, whether an architect. But I want to show you the individual path into DevOps, right? So let's get started. Now, first, in order to understand how to become a DevOps professional, let's define what exactly a skill set you require for that. Software development basics, right? So you need to understand how software, you know, gets developed. What is the SDLC processes, the life cycle of software development, you know, developing features, modern processes like Agile and processes or Agile Scrum would be nice to have and really understand what software development lifecycle covers from idea to code all the way to releasing it to the end user. Now, here it's important to mention that you don't need to be a software developer, which is great, right? You don't need to be a software developer, but just the fundamentals of Agile and Scrum processes on a high level you need to understand conceptually. Next is software deployment. So once the feature is developed, it needs to be released to the end user, which basically means you need an environment where the application be running and available for the end user. And as a DevOps engineer, you need to know how to provision and prepare the environment and how to maintain it, right? So for that, you need knowledge, right? You need technical skills, you need you know, server administration, creating virtual machines, creating EC2 instances if you're in AWS, for example, you know, configure networking, on-premise, hybrid, cloud, and so on, right? So a lot of stuff. But the modern infrastructure concepts, you need to understand how to work with containers and most popular container technologies like Docker, for example, right, or Kubernetes. So projects like tens or hundreds of Docker containers, you need to know how to work with container orchestrations like Kubernetes, like I mentioned earlier, which is the most popular. And again, all these tools can be used you know, either on premise or on the cloud. So if you're working on the cloud, which is, for example, AWS, which is the most popular and exponentially growing cloud platform, you need to know AWS specific services like how to manage and deploy using AWS, right? And connecting all these pieces together, which is really the heart of the DevOps process is the CI CD processes, right? Continuous integration, continuous delivery or deployment. So how software is being developed, how do you actually deploy those features within the CI CD process, right? So we don't just take and throw it on there. It's actually a process, right? Because yeah, we make mistakes. So it has to go through a certain process. And within the process, there are many, many areas. For example, one of the important ones is the QA testing, which is of course acts as a testing of your code that runs through the pipeline, right? So. And that's really what DevOps CI CD pipeline is for. Now, testing code, packaging it, and deploying all the way to the end environment, right, to the delivery to the end user is important. 
So what are those gatekeepers, right? So like I mentioned, QA testing, testing code quality, code logic, any bugs within the code, checking for any security issues, for example, and it's supposed to perform the way it should be, right? That's the idea of software development, right? So the CICD pipeline is basically the process where software runs through. And of course, there are other tools that you need to take a look at, such as CircleCI, Jenkins, which act as continuous delivery or continuous integration tools, okay? So those tools are important as well. Now, next is monitoring. So, you know, we know that we make mistakes and yeah, it happened. It just happened, right? So once that happens, monitor monitoring is important. So the 100% test of every single aspect of deployment and some issues still can slip through into production environment, right? So that's why we have to monitor the entire pipeline, right? For bugs, issues, when it appears or before it appears into production. So this is part of the DevOps skill set, right? So you create a process of handling, discovering issues instead of having a, you know, a panic mode, right? So you don't want to get into that. And that's really the key important aspect. Well, it's a thing called monitoring and observability, right? So the last stage of continuous deployment, for example, and after deploying the code changes, we don't just say, hey, we're done, let's deploy it and move on to the next step. Instead, what we do is we observe and monitor very, very closely what actually happens. And if, if some user happens at an encounter, something, something crashes, if it doesn't work, we know we need to proactively fix the issue, right? Maybe a few hours or a few days, depending on the error itself and actively looking and observing certain issues in production. And of course, finally, the last missing piece of finally conquering DevOps is automation, right? And that's that's a whole beast in itself, but very important. And automating, especially in the areas where they're redundant tasks, right? So let me give you an example. So for every new code release, you always need to test your application. You always need to check for security. You always need to package and deploy application changes, right? So these tests, should happen automatically. So you make sure that you execute automated tasks, the developers or test engineers, they have automated security checks, quality checks, and have the entire automation code that deploys the code to the end environment. So the CICD pipeline deploys the application and you don't deploy the application locally, right, from your own machine, but rather the CICD pipeline does it for you and that's the beauty of it. Next is, uh, or another aspect is monitoring, right? So you're observing, you're monitoring and waiting to see if something breaks as code flows through the pipeline. So instead you wanna use you know, tools that monitor your applications and then get notified if something happens, right? So monitoring tools like, for example, CloudWatch alarms or other tools that are available that you learn in order to get notified, right? So we automate things like, you know, even if it's not redundant, we still try to automate it, right? The idea is to make the entire process efficient and streamlined, right? So it's not something that you do very often, but you still want to make sure that you want to automate, right? And that's more and more enterprise organizations are looking for those skill sets as a DevOps engineer. So if you need like multiple staging environments like development, test, production, and generally having everything in code versus some manual scripts, for example, or some person creates a script, it's better to have the entire process documented, right? Yeah, let me repeat that, guys. It's documentation. I've seen in my experience, you know, very few documented steps or the entire process being documented, right? Because technical individuals, you know, they, they just want to work. They want to fix. They want to make sure it's automated. But sometimes documentation is overlooked. All right, so towards automating and workflows to make more efficient, that's the key, right? And some of the most popular tools, by the way, I'm gonna give you the most popular is Terraform, which is infrastructure as a code. The other is Puppet. And there are many, many other tools, but Terraform by far is the most powerful. And of course, it's exponentially growing. So adding Terraform to your skill set is great. And yeah, you can of course check out the links in the description where our full courses, free courses, our entire Terraform so you can get learning, right? So having those DevOps skills 
you know, definitely plays a final role if you're starting from zero. But what happens if you're transitioning to from not from zero or you're, you're maybe changing career from a different uh, industry, right? So it's different for each of you, right? It's not the same as for me or for anyone else. Uh, maybe you're a sysadmin, maybe you're a software engineer, maybe you're just a beginner, or maybe you don't have an IT background, right? And want to transition to DevOps. So now I want to show you how you can transition into DevOps and basically learn all these tools that I mentioned, starting from your specific background. So starting as a system admin, if you are a system admin, you know how to administer servers, for example, and other systems. So you have the technical skills in setting up the infrastructure, configuring and preparing it for deployment. So working with operating systems like Linux, installing software, security, networking, configurations, you're already familiar with that. Some of the other tasks you do as a system admin, for example, like monitoring systems, health, for example, backups, disaster recovery, snapshots, installing and patching, right, servers. In small projects, you may have to also do database admin, for example, network admin, security admin, right, because, hey, you wear multiple hats. And these are the skills that are that you already have, and you already have a lot of skills that you can use in deployment and operations side of DevOps. Now, this includes day zero activities such as initial setup for example of the infrastructure but also additional tasks and you can learn quickly because you're already tech savvy now many sysadmins also know scripting so that would be a big help for example you can create small python scripts or bash scripts and as a sysadmin you have a very good foundation to get into devops but the big missing part by the way is learning the software development basics so understanding the Git workflows, the versioning, how developers work, how they push code, how they create code, right? What are the branches, for example? So that's the part that you need to focus on as a sysadmin if you're transitioning from sysadmin to DevOps, right? Because you don't have a, a development background. You're not a software developer, right? But you need to be able to understand the fundamentals of the processes. So, you know, a few bugs will come out, right? If you actually pay attention to the development side more and more, you'll be able to understand the entire pipeline, which is dev and ops, right? That's the idea. So before moving on, of course, check out claydesk.com or blog.claydesk.com. We have tons and tons of courses, hands-on courses, and of course, we update our courses regularly. So you can get to, to really learn not only by just watching, but actually doing hands-on. All right, so you can collaborate, for example, uh, locally and in real time, and you can also work with other developers or other admins or other DevOps engineers. So team building skills are also important, right? And that's important because uh, without a team, you can't just work alone, right? It, it's really, really difficult because there are times when you need some assistance or you have a question that needs answered or you may be able to help someone with your own skill set, right? So that's important. All right, so, so next let's take a look at if you're a software developer and if you're starting as a software developer, again, you have a pretty good background in software development and you know the important part of DevOps, which is the development end, right? Which is the software development and processes and how everything works. But most probably you're missing skills like server management, right? So you need to start by learning about virtual machines, you know, how to configure them, how to, you know, balance the load, for example, again, from the infrastructure side, right? So most modern applications now run on the cloud. So you need to learn how to do all of these like cloud infrastructure deployment. And that would be your starting point in learning DevOps as a software developer. Now, once you have the foundation, you can build on that, you know, learn about containers on top of virtual machines and how to run applications in containers, how to run containers on a platform like Kubernetes, for example. So your programming skills will be a great, great help in automation, right? That's the real key because you can write automation scripts and development processes. Another common background uh, people that have is test automation engineer, right? So if you are one of those, then you need to have a little bit of catching up to do, right? As compared to sysadmin or software development, but you can still use your existing skills in DevOps. So as a test engineer, 
you probably know how software developers are working. So like the agile processes, Jira workflows, right? Or as part of the test automation knowledge, you understand the difference in different testing scopes, testing at code level, testing the whole application, or testing at abstract level, how the application integrates with other services, and so on. You also understand how to test different aspects of application. And that knowledge is really, really helpful for setting up the automated CICD pipeline. Because in order to automate the pipeline and streamline and deliver your application changes all the way to the production environment, you really need extensive automation testing you know, skills. And as soon as you need the human element to break the automation pipeline, for example, right? That's really when you break the bottleneck. But you know how to write, you know, the test, the code. You can use those skills in different frameworks. And that's definitely helpful for scripting and coding and some automation parts of DevOps processes. So let's say, you know, if, if you're new to it, right? And the last thing I want to talk about, of course, is starting as as a network engineer. So if you are a network engineer, for example, right? And that's important because if you have a background as network engineer, which is probably the farthest from the DevOps career, right? But you have certain skills you can bring into DevOps are important. So as a network engineer, you know how to configure devices, you know, routing, for example, your valuable knowledge in configuring networking for infrastructures, your subnets, on the cloud, right? Different zones, for example, if you're working with AWS. So many network engineers transition to cloud network engineering. So what they do is they do everything on the cloud platform instead of you know configuring physical routers or switches, they configure everything on the cloud, virtual routes, virtual uh, subnets, and so on, right? So with this knowledge, you have an advantage to understand networking in virtual machines, containers, which is a big part of how modern applications run, especially at enterprise level, right? So you understand you need to learn Docker, Kubernetes, and these are really maybe a little bit of challenging for uh, network engineers, but since you already have the tech uh, knowledge or the tech savvy background, it's easier to grasp. So you can definitely use your knowledge and expertise in these areas, right? Some networking engineers they also know scripting, right? Because they have you know multiple skill set. Another helpful skill when it comes to automation part of DevOps, right, is scripting. So all of these backgrounds are considered, right? When you're creating, basically, when we create courses, we take into account all these backgrounds. So every single you know individual benefits when you're learning and getting hands-on skills. So no matter which background you come from you are going to have or gain knowledge and gain important skill sets and all these tools, right? So ultimately, of course, it's a learning process and learning never stops. Whether you're a DevOps engineer or a solutions architect or any of the areas, right? As a technical person, you are always, always learning. So that's really the key part on how um, you can go from zero all the way to becoming a DevOps engineer, no matter which background you have, whether you're an existing sysadmin, whether you're a software developer, whether you're a network engineer, or whether you're just starting from scratch. So to summarize, there are about four phases. First one, getting the prerequisites, right? So depending on which background you're coming from, pre-knowledge that you have, you need to first make sure to get any missing prerequisite knowledge. So as a system admin, for example, or a network admin, learn the software development workflows. As a developer, learn the basics of infrastructure, virtual servers, for example. Of course, with zero IT background, you have to get all these knowledge, you know, and gain all these skill set from server admin to development. So it'll be a little bit of difficult, challenging entry, but you will get there if you really dive in. Second step is learning cloud, Docker, and Kubernetes. So after learning the prerequisites, you already get started with the important DevOps skills of working with containers and container orchestration tools like Kubernetes. So basically learning Docker and Kubernetes will help your teams deploy efficient code and applications. So Kubernetes, of course, is a very you know, complex tool, but you need to spend time to master it. And since most of the modern applications and Kubernetes clusters, for example, are running on cloud, you need to learn cloud infrastructure, how to work with cloud infrastructure, how to configure it, how to scale it, 
and so on. The third step is automation. Once you have mastered the skills and got the skill set, it's time to learn how to optimize and automate the existing processes. And as a DevOps professional, automation skills are one of the most important ones. At the heart of DevOps, learning to build CICD pipelines are essential skills. And finally, you will learn how to automate parts of the complete DevOps processes one by one using the concepts and tools of what's called access code, for example, right? Using infrastructure as code like Terraform or security as code, policy as code, and so on, which basically means that automating everything in the form of code. Now, number four, of course, is go from there. Learning every single day. New tools are being developed every single day. So as a DevOps professional, you should learn how to evaluate and test these new tools. And many new tools with the same goals to optimize and automate the existing DevOps processes. And of course, you can make them more efficient. So there are many, many other videos and full courses that I have down there. So make sure you check the description out and give it a thumbs up. And of course, comment down below any questions, any comments, let me know. I'm always here to answer and help you guys go to the next